What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and I believe that it is time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle. Now, this is a battle I had against another passerby, uh, using the same team as last battle, actually. Uh, we, of course, have the Swords Dance, wonderful Feraligator with Sheer Force. I actually let off with Excadrill, just wanting to get my rocks up. I saw a few things on his team that wouldn't really appreciate it, or I, that I thought were sashed. And I assume this was the kind of a, either a nasty plot or maybe a subbing Miss Magius. And I didn't care about that because I could just hit it with Earthquake. So I set up my rocks as he burns me, and now my Excadrill is a little bit maimed. Um, I can still hit him pretty hard, and I take this Shadow Ball not very well because this is a more offensive Excadrill with just rocks. Uh, but that's okay. As long as I keep the pressure up on him, he shouldn't be able to set up his own rocks. And even with the burn, I'm able to two-hit KO that Miss Magius. So I'm able to put him in a very nice range for something to come and finish him off. Now, it's unfortunate, I believe I had this battle either, I, I think I had this battle when I was sick, actually. No idea why I was trying to battle while I was sick. Just bad ideas all around. But we're going to go into Feraligator here for some stupid reason. And I knew he would burn me, and I figured this is a good time to set up. Because setting up in the beginning of a battle works out so well. No, it doesn't. You should typically not set up early unless you have appropriately scouted your opponent's team. So I show him that I have the Aqua Jet. I wanted him to know that information, that I had Swords Dance and Aqua Jet. Because um, sometimes Feraligator doesn't run that. Sometimes he runs Dragon Dance or whatever. So he brings out Gastrodon. Of course, Gastrodon's ability is uh, Storm Drain, so the water moves won't work. And so I think right here, he's just going to maybe try to set up on me with Stockpile or something like that. And that's exactly what he does. And um, since this is a passerby battle, it's a little bit harder to determine necessarily what your opponent might do. So, I think that he probably has Recover, Stockpile, maybe uh, Scald, and and Toxic, something like that. And so I didn't think that it would be wise to attack on that turn, because if he has Recover, he's just going to Recover Stall me. I need to get more Swords Dances. And so I'm able to get another Swords Dance, as he kind of just wastes his turn recovering from the uh, from this Entry Hazard damage. And then I take him out with a Crunch. I don't think the critical hit mattered, just because of how many Swords Dances I had. Uh, and he makes a really weird move and goes into Aerodactyl, knowing that I have Aqua Jet. So I figured he would double switch out into something, because he had plenty of things to resist the water type move, and um, just have to take the Aqua Jet, and then I'd die to the, to the Life Orb and the Burn Recoil. But he just outright attacks me, and I just did not see that coming. I could have just clicked Aqua Jet and ended Aerodactyl right there. But that's okay. Uh, for Alligator was able to take out two of those Pokemon, so definitely not a bad trade. Two for one deal. Um, and Chestnut basically walls Aerodactyl unless he has Aerial Ace. Now I find out that he has Ice Fang. I also find out that I get frozen by said Ice Fang, and that sucks. I think Ice Fang has a 10% chance of freezing, 20% chance of flinch. Just not, uh, but we see how little it's doing. If I can just thaw out, I can definitely take on this Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, spiky Shield is going to be a good way to whittle it down because it is using contact moves to take advantage of that tough claws boost that it gets from using contact moves. But uh, I just I would love to not get frozen again or flinch or anything like that. Um, I just go for the hammer arm trying to put some damage onto Aerodactyl. And my speed falls because it is hammer arm. And I figured now is a good time to predict him to just keep on attacking. I went for Spiky Shield again hoping that he didn't have a roost. And he goes for Earthquake, and I was like, oh, that was a good move, because, of course, Earthquake does not make contact. Now my chances of using Spiky Shield are cut in half, but unfortunately it fails. So my opponent can, um, he can definitely get a failure on my Spiky Shield, and I can get frozen, apparently, because that's how probability works out sometimes. But we're just going to go for a Spiky Shield once again. some point in there, I really should have set up some Spikes or Leech Seeded or something. Uh, I don't know, I just wasn't really anticipating having this many issues taking out an Aerodactyl with Chestnut when the Aerodactyl didn't have Aerial Ace. But fortunately for him, I was unable to get that Spiky Shield going uh, two times in a row at any given point there. And that's okay though, he's at such low HP that Entei can come in here and finish it off with uh, its Choice Bandit power. I have Extreme Speed, yes it is resisted, but with that low HP, he can't switch out because of the Stealth Rocks. I knew it's pretty, it's, it's gonna be a good bet to just knock myself into Extreme Speed. Now with Gudra in here, Gudra can have access to things like Earthquake and Muddy Water, but I didn't really want any of my other Pokemon to take those moves, and I was hoping I could 2 KO Gudra if it was not a more bulky variant. And looking at the damage from the Choice Bandit uh, Extreme Speed after Stealth Rocks, 
I can definitely finish him off with another extreme speed. He actually gets a critical hit on the uh, Dragon Pulse, and to me, that that definitely says that uh, he's offensive, for sure, because I did a ton of damage. Fortunately, though, the speed drops don't matter from Gooey because I am running extreme speed. And we're just going to hit the Florges a couple of times because why not? Um, of course, Florges seems to be a little bit more defensively bulky than Gudra, and he's going to be able to take me out with the uh, with the Moonblast, which sucks. If he hadn't gotten a crit on the Dragon Pulse, I would have had plenty of HP to live a Moonblast. But that's okay because Drapion is here, one of my favorite Pokemon. I knew he was going to switch on into Kling Kling. Even if he stayed in and Moonblasted me, I didn't really care. Great time to get up a Swords Dance, just as your opponent is switching, just go into a frenzy with some swords and some safety protective gear for your eyes just in case. I get to knock off the Clink Clank here as he goes for a gear grind, and Clink Clank just does not have the stopping power even after a gear grind to take down uh, my Drapion, and Drapion is just very bulky naturally, and I, I don't even have that much HP investment in this Drapion, he takes that incredibly well. So we say bye bye to Clink Clank here. And that just leaves Florja, so despite my faux pas earlier in the battle with Feraligator, all I need to do here is click Poison Jab, and that's going to be the end of this match with Drapion kind of cleaning up the match. And I didn't even have to use my own Mega Aerodactyl in this battle, which I definitely thought we were going to have some uh, kind of dinosaur action going on there, but we didn't. That's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle, and I will be talking to you again soon. Bye now.